My name is Mark Poole, I'm the Operations Manager here at ATEC Solutions and we are a company that specialises in providing engineering solutions for safety critical environments working across various industries such as oil and gas, aerospace, marine, land defence. Uh, we can provide end of life support for products where the OEM has either gone out of business or no longer supports the products that the customers have in place. We can take that product, we can reverse engineer it, we can manage the obsolescence on it and basically keep that unit running. We work with various businesses like Rolls-Royce, RBSL, Lockheed Martin, um, Rolls-Royce in particular where we work, look after the marine products for our Navy. A lot of the products that are in, on our ships that are old, the legacy products and therefore come across obsolescence as the electronic market and the, the industries develop. Uh, products are not available, we will develop solutions to overcome that obsolescence and build it into the product to make sure that it delivers as it's supposed to, as it was designed to originally. Yeah, on this particular station, this is a, a PCB out of a, an engine control unit from a T-55 engine, which is the engine on a Chinook helicopter. And Tony's just replacing some components that when we've done the initial inspection on it and the initial test on it have been identified as, as faulty. So he's replacing an IC on this board. When units arrive with us, the start of the process is to do an initial survey where we will take the unit, take the product, do initial tests on it and try and diagnose the fault if there is one. Once the fault's been found, we will identify it down to component level, replace those components, which is, uh, is what Tony's doing now. All of our operators are qualified to IPC 610 and 771177722 uh, repair standards. Once the repair is complete, we will then put the unit back through test again and make sure that the fault's disappeared. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes it's actually, you fix one fault to find another. So we repeat the process right the way through to test again at the end, going through all the environmental testing to ensure that the product is fit for purpose when it leaves the building. It's critical that we document everything that we do, everything about it. They, they have a log card that goes with the job that we have to update. So from the minute the unit came into us, we're starting to collect data, we're starting to record that data and historically would have all been done on paper. It's a long relationship that we've got with Web Control. It, the Web Control have been supporting ATEC since they put in the new ERP system some time ago now. So therefore when it came to, to wanting to go down the route of implementing tablets, um, getting rid of paperwork and making a smarter shop floor, smarter factory, then Web Control was the the company of choice for us because we knew they would deliver what we wanted and what was best for us and not best for them. Initially we worked uh, closely with ATEC Solutions here on site and remotely to kind of fully understand all the needs and requirements of the project. Um, we wanted to fully understand exactly what made ATEC Solutions unique to them and how we can use those, those value propositions to kind of enhance the application um, and make it more beneficial to them. The challenge we initially had with that, I think, was actually removing the preconceived ideas that they had around um, the, the limitations of their ERP system. What we wanted to do is, is almost strip that back and look at the process with fresh eyes and to almost design the perfect process that wasn't limited either by technology or by what they needed to do to sort of achieve the outcomes that we wanted for this project. Previously, when we had a job, we had an instruction for drawings, wiring, item lists, and we would physically stamp it with our self-certification stamp uh, from IPC and, and date it and pass it on to the next operation. Uh, any additional test uh, requirements would be written down by the test engineer. Same again, a rubber stamp for them, and when it's completed, you certify your work. Now, with the one app, once you leave the operation that you've been asked to complete, it gives a digital stamp to prove that you have completed that uh, operation. Even at the end of the process, what we found was that we would only extract some of that data into the system. The most of the data that we actually could use for reliability and data analysis and trending was left on the paperwork, was then scanned and just filed away. So by creating an electronic 
app or the, the, the use of the tablets, the smart factory shop floor as we're calling it, and collecting the data electronically through the process means that it's live. So decisions can be made live, not only on the unit itself, but on the operational function. So that the, with, you know, the number of jobs that we've got going through at any one time, we can go in, we can see where they're up to, we can alter things around, we can reschedule if we need to. We can do it all on the fly because we've got live information. Before we would have had to walk around the shop floor, we would have had to try and find, physically find the product. We wouldn't know where it was at any one time where now the, the app tells us where it is by the station that it's at because it's recorded, tells us which operator's working on it, tells us which components have been replaced on it. All of this data is available immediately for us so we can make better decisions, more informed decisions. They can get drawings on the app, engineering documentation that supports the processes they're doing. They're all available through the app. We've managed to make sure that that everything's at the, the end of the fingertip now for them, whereas before it was on a piece of paper, they were writing it down, they were going to cabinets, they were getting engineering paperwork, getting engineering documents. All of that is a thing of the past for us now. So this is the, the, the start of the future for ATEC. tablets he's just loading up a works order so he's clicking his works order to enter it to start using the testing templates perform the testing te templates were all used manually and written down whereas now we've now got them in an electronic format so here's Dari typing in the serial number before this is all handwritten the best thing about this now is everything is now readable and in electronic format so it's constantly updated for us. The picking process is selecting components that are used in the kits on the shop floor to build the jobs. The screens are very simple to use. All the prompts are very self-explanatory. And then you're able to um, pick the jobs that you need, print off the components that you want, how many you need to pick, and then it'll print the labels off for you, the correct date and time and the GRN when the goods were picked. The platform itself that we've built for the application um, is quite unique in itself. It's not a pull, a pull of data, it's actually a push of data. And what I mean by that is, is that in most modern applications now, when we press a button, we want to see the data instantly. We want instant results. We don't want to press a button and have to wait for, for that data to come through and for those results to take, take their time. In older systems like the one that they use here for the ERP system, collecting those large amounts of data when you're making that request can take a long time. What we've done is built a platform that actually brings that data in real time, is very, very quick, and rather than us pulling that data, we're actually pushing it from the ERP into our application using a very sophisticated platform that we've developed that actually can be used across multiple applications. One of the key features actually of the application is its mobility. Um, most ERP systems are set to a fixed terminal, in most cases to a fixed kind of PC terminal on, on a desk. We want to create an application that can be fully mobile, that can be moved around the workshop, can be used in any area that wasn't fixed to any one place. Um, the particular application can also be um, used on an Apple device, and an Android device. In this particular case, we're opting for um, a laptop with a touch screen, which gives them more flexibility in what they're doing on the shop floor. They can obviously carry this around from work center to work center um, without the need to actually then change, change their PCs. Firstly, it'll do some very clever scheduling in the background. So based on due dates, based on priorities, it will automatically prioritize when those works orders need to be um, and schedule them on the work centers as per the, the operational routings of that job. This is the main screen, several options for the operators to choose from, the main one being the works orders. This is a, a list of all the route cards, or the, the jobs that are live on the shop floor at the moment, which we have allocated to the app. The operator then 
comes along and picks the job that he's got to work on next. Um, that opens up the actual job with the routings and all of the processes that the operation, the steps that they've got to follow. Once they're in the works order, they can start the job, they can stop the job, they can pause the job, they can log faults, they can log test information, they can see past test results, they can look at quality statistics, they can look at quality standards. They can also look at the technical drawings of the job that they're working on as well, as well as all the operational steps that are required to complete that operation. So the operators booked on the jobs through the barcode of the op and the, and the barcode that the operator has, which is unique to him. So he would log his time on and off the op. However, they were not doing it in real time. So some of them would wait till the end of the day and then they would book all of the time to the jobs that they worked on. Mm -hmm. It meant that the accuracy on the manufacturing time that we had in the system that we were collecting was not accurate. Now, they, literally, when they log into the, to the tablet to work on that job, it's, it starts the clock ticking. And when they finish the job and they log out, it stops, and all of that data is recorded. We've never been in a position before where we've had the data to actually analyse whether it is or isn't correct. So now we will have the data to look at the manufacturing times that we've got within the system and adjust those manufacturing times in line with actual times being given on the job. It's almost as if Web Control are looking at a roadmap of our business roadmap and are looking to develop the, the, the ERP system ahead of us actually hitting the problems is how it feels for us. We knew from a business point of view what we wanted or what we hoped we could get. Web Control knew from an IT point of view what was possible and what we could get. I think between us we came up with an initial scope, but all the way through the project, Web Control have been there to support us. So as we've gone along, like any project, you sit down with a blank piece of paper, you start at the beginning and you draw out what you want or what you think you can get. When you actually start to implement these changes, you realise that there's opportunities to improve it even more. They've been a supportive partner I would probably go as far as to say, you know, not just a supplier to us, but we see them as a partner working to make sure that we make the most of the ERP system that we've got. You know, I could stand here and talk all day of, of the benefits, and, I'd, and if I'm being honest, I don't think we've even realised all the benefits yet. It's a new thing for us. We've only been live a matter of weeks or months. I think once we've built up that data behind us again, it will give us even more things to, to focus on for the future and help develop the business. 